I can't hear him. The Liberian guy, I think, from the Because I think that's the patch. Right. Um, our meeting today, our meeting today, he's in the audience. Oh, really? Yes. Because his emblem on the coat. Okay. Okay, it's a little bit after seven o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. We'll call the Johnson City Council meeting number 22-23 to order. Cindy, roll call, please. Councilmember Cope. Here. Martin. Here. Burkhart. Here. Ready? Evans. I'd like to welcome everyone that is in the audience this evening. If you are here for an item that is on the agenda, we would ask for you to wait for that item to come up and address the council at that time. If you're here for an item that is not on the agenda, there will be an opportunity under public communications to address the council, and that will be coming up here shortly. The next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, we haven't asked our new city administrator to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mike, could you give us the honors? Absolutely, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the agenda approval. Uh, Mike, are there any changes to the agenda? Mayor and Council, um, under the consent agenda item U, uh, that should be consider amendment number two, not number three. So that was just a typographical error in there. Any other changes? Not this evening for me. Okay. Council, any uh, any changes? Okay. Do we have a, mo a motion to approve the agenda? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Cindy, vote please. Councilmember Burkhart. Yes. Martin. Yes. Cope. Yes. Motion passed. Oops. Moving on to public communications, we have one scheduled public communication this evening, and that is recognition of outstanding personal achievement of a Johnson citizen by the uh, Johnson Police Department. Good evening, Mayor City Council. Uh, tonight, the Police Department and Mayor Dierenfeld invite the City Council and other members of our community to join us in recognizing a significant achievement of one of our citizens. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Mayor and Nathan Rohde and the Mark G family and Sergeant James Slack to join me at the front of the council dais, please. I'm sure many of you re may recognize Nathan from his time spent outdoors, enjoying our trail system, many outdoor events and amenities. Uh, but let me share just a little background information on what brings us all here tonight and the connection between Nathan and all of these individuals. In August of 2015, then school resource officer Slack was assigned to the Johnston schools as a new SRO. During Slack's six year assignment, he and Nathan became friends they shared interactions in the hallways at school, at lunch, occasionally in Nathan's classroom and outside of school as well. Nathan's kind heart and strong wave has become a staple within our community. 
He is known as a dedicated friend of the Johnston Police Department through his various positive encounters with their officers. This summer, Nathan, along with his family and amazing support team, helped Nathan accomplish a significant personal achievement. Nathan successfully completed the Do Des Moines Half Marathon. Nathan, along with supporters Mr. G, Sr. and Jr., ran the race with Nathan 13.1 miles. Nathan completed the event in three hours and 20, 28 minutes. So without further delay, Sergeant Slack, would you and Mayor Derenfeld please prevent, present Nathan with his well-deserved Des Moines Half Marathon Medal. Well, Nathan, is this working okay? Um, what an achievement, and thank you so much for, for those kind remarks. And uh, Nathan uh, inspired many people along the route of the half marathon, and, and we just basically ran from police officer to police officer. And <laughs> they would be a little surprised, you know, to be greeted by Nathan, but, I mean, we just, just went and one step at a time. And um, it was truly an inspiration, Nathan. Was there something you'd like to add? No. <laughs> Are we going to run next year? Yeah. Okay. So that, that's the key thing. And uh, Nathan, you're special to all of us. Well, Nathan, I want to congratulate you as well. Um, it's, a, it's a huge achievement. Did you have fun doing it? Yeah. Did you have fun training for it? Yeah. You didn't train? <laughs> <laughs> It's about, uh, you know, 10 miles there, 10 miles back, so 20 miles. And uh, we took, my son and I took Nathan with us to the Des Moines Expo, and people started asking Nathan, are you going to run? And he eventually started saying yes. And I said, Nathan, do you know what a marathon, half marathon is? <laughs> and he said, no. And I said, well, it's like, it's like a long bike ride. <laughs> without a bike <laughs> and I said do you really want to do that and he said yes and so I called his parents and uh, they said fine and uh, so I signed him up and and he did it we did not seriously we did not train my oldest son asked me so dad have you ever seen Nathan run I was like mm, I don't think so <laughs> but I knew he had the capacity from from his bike ride he's an incredible rider so but we're training for next year well, Nathan, I am super impressed now to hear all of that. So, again, great accomplishment. We are so proud of you. Um, it's, it's, it's not easy to run a half marathon, and you did it without training. So, <laughs> so that, that, that's truly amazing. So, again, congratulations, Nathan. Job well done. Uh, just wanted to quick uh, say congratulations to Nathan. Uh, Nathan came and saw me after the marathon, a little bit before, but we decided we couldn't get him into some shoes. But uh, he came down to Flea Feet Des Moines, and we got him into a, a good pair of shoes. So next year, you've got some good shoes to run in the marathon. So congratulations, buddy. We're proud of you. Nathan, I think you'll be an inspiration for the entire city council to train for the next marathon. <laughs> 
is she looking at? Thank you. Good job, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> more than a year's training. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're still under public communications. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council on an item that is not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to public hearings. We have several public hearings this evening. We'll start with 4A, hold a public hearing and consider resolution number 22-311, approving and authorizing execution of a development agreement by and among the City of Johnston, DMR Holdings, LLC, and Notch and Nail, LLC. We'll open this public hearing, hearing at 7.09. Adam. Good evening. Uh, it's proposed to enter into a development agreement with DMR Holdings and Notch and Nail for a building currently under construction at 5000 Northwest 57th Avenue. Notch and Nail is a custom cabinet maker, currently have a facility in West Des Moines. West Des Moines has provided the sign off for the, for the fair play agreement uh, for this to, uh, to occur. Uh, the investment is approximately $2.2 .2 million. As part of the agreement, um, the developer and Notch Nails agreed to construct the building for their uh, approved site plan, create and retain five jobs for the duration of the five years, and uh, provide an annual certification conforming uh, payment of taxes and the maintenance of the jobs. The city would rebate our base TIF package 50% uh, of the TIF increment generated by the project for five years in an amount not to exceed $140,000. Uh, development agreements uh, recommended for approval by the Ad Hoc Economic Development Committee. Happy to answer any questions. Council, have any questions for Adam? This is a public hearing on this item. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing then at 710. Do we have a motion to approve resolution number 22-311? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Cindy vote, please. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Motion passed. Moving on to item 4B, hold a public hearing and consider resolution number 22-310. Approving and authorizing execution of a development agreement by and between the city of Johnston and Northwest Beaver Development, LLC. And we'll open this public hearing at 7-11. Uh, Northwest Beaver Development, LLC is uh, proposing construction of a new facility at 5930 on Northwest Beaver Drive. Uh, building's not fully designed at this point. You've not seen the site plan, but it is expected to break ground subject to approval early 2023. Uh, this development agreement, again, is a five-year, 50% base TIF package. Um, the developer would construct a 21,000-square-foot building to be used as office and warehouse space. Uh, it would include a stone facade uh, and decorative steel paneling uh, and generally meet and exceed the uh, zoning district's regulations. Uh, that is codified in the development agreement. Uh, and they would maintain in the building tenants that create and retain a minimum of 11 jobs. It's intended to be Bradley Tools uh, relocation from their existing facility. Also provide an annual certification confirming property taxes have been paid and the maintenance of those jobs. And the city would rebate 50% of the increment generated by the project, project not to exceed $200,000. Again, subject to annual appropriation and recommended for approval by the development committee. Have to answer any questions on this one too. Council, have any questions? Seeing none, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing at 713. Do we have a motion to approve resolution number 22-310? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second, discussion? Cindy Bolt, please. Councilmember Cope. Yes. Burkhart. Yes. Martin. Yes. Motion passed. 
Item 4C, hold a public hearing and consider resolution number 22-313, determining an area of the city to be an economic development area, and that the rehabilitation, conservation, redevelopment, development, or a combination thereof of such area is necessary in the interest of the public health, safety, and welfare of the residents of the city. Des designating such area as appropriate for, the ur for urban renewal projects and adopting amendment number three to the West Central Urban Renewal Plan. We'll open this public hearing at 714. The third amendment to the West Central Urban Renewal Area as shown on the map here, the original area being the Beaver Creek 2 building for Corteva, uh, the green area being in the amendment number one area of which we just revised that TIF ordinance on at the last council meeting, the red area being uh, amendment number two area, and the thin right away line there going north uh, is the uh, proposed addition to the urban renewal area in anticipation of improvements to the street. Other updates to the urban renewal plan uh, include updated projects list, uh, potential economic development grants, uh, and the addition of uh, the ability to pay for a second economic development staff person. Uh, who Peter Johnson is on your consent agenda this evening, intended to start Wednesday. Uh, consultation was held with the Johnson School District of Polk County, November 16th. No comments were received. Uh, also not received any public comments uh, as of today. Happy to answer any questions. Council, have any questions? Uh, so Adam, so this is appears to be a, kind of a road plan road or road extension yeah i let matt what, comment on uh, what that is in the cip um, as far as timeline and the improvements for it's the 100 street improvements north of 70th <clears throat> currently right now it's slated for an asphalt overlay and then discussion um, during our cip we would be placing a 10-foot uh, trail on one side of that road to reach the crosshaven uh, neighborhood and tie them back into the regional trail at 70th the, uh, the road it's, project it's, doesn't go all the way up through that right away, but we are uh, showing the entire right away just in anticipation of future potential additional improvements up there. It also covers the sanitary sewer alignment. So the, we're not so the northern part that. of that purple line would be sanitary sewer, but not necessarily road. Not necessarily anticipated. In fact, not anticipated to be paid for through TIF, uh, but while we're adding this right away for the road improvement project, adding that entire right away. Okay. How far north would the because the road would go probably about where is it just across the, where the creek is and then it's where it stops? Yeah, approximately 82nd Street or 82nd Avenue. Yeah. So we're not extending that in the road is not being extended further to the north as anticipated. It's just okay. Any other questions for Adam Council? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council on this item? If not, we will close the public hearing then at 716. Do we have a motion to approve resolution number 22-313? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second discussion. Cindy vote, please. Councilmember Burkhart. Yes. Cope. Yes. Martin. Yes. Motion passed. Item 4D, hold a public hearing and consider resolution number 22-314, determining an area of the city to be an economic development area and that the rehabilitation, conservation, redevelopment, development, or a combination thereof of such area is necessary in the interest of the public health, safety, or welfare of the residents of the city. Designating such area as appropriate for urban renewal projects and adopting amendment, amendment number two to the Northwest 100th Street Economic Development Area Urban Renewal Plan. We'll open this public hearing at 717. Uh, yes, this is amendment number two to the Northwest 100th Urban Renewal Plan. Uh, that includes areas along 54th Avenue, 100th and 62nd. Uh, through this amendment, there are no changes to the urban renewal area. Uh, we're simply updating the project list and anticipated costs for public infrastructure projects and adding in again the ability to pay for a second economic development staff position. Uh, no comments were received from uh, Polk County or the school district at the consultation and have not received any uh, comments from the public. I'll have any questions for Adam. 
Hearing none, do we have an anyone, anyone in the audience that would like to address the council? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing at 718. Do we have a motion to approve resolution number 22-314? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second discussion. <clears throat> Cindy Volt, please. Councilmember Martin. Yes. Cope. Yes. Burkhart. Yes. Motion passed. Item 4E, conduct a public hearing on the matter of adoption of plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for the 2022 Terrace Drive drainage improvements and consider resolution number 22-317, adopting plan specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost, consideration of construction bids, and resolution number 22-318, making award of construction contract. We'll open this public hearing at 719. Good evening. Uh, November 29th, the city received bids for the 2022 Terrace Drive drainage improvement project. Up on the screen, we've got kind of a vicinity map where the project is located. It is just south of Pioneer Parkway and east of Merle Hay Road and consists of constructing a stormwater uh, drainage system in front of the townhomes. Currently, there is a small diameter pipe that runs between um, the townhomes to the would be to the south. It does go underneath some of those decks. So in order to not have to remove those decks um, for those residents, we are going to relocate and reroute the storm sewer across the front of that property. Uh, we did have two bidders on the project. Uh, the engineer's opinion of probable cost was $190,595. The low bid received was $234,470. Uh, we reviewed the bid tab. Um, it, it appears that the all of the increase that was in this project or over the engineer's estimate came in the cost of uh, boring or trenchless construction on that pipe underneath the driveways. It was um, approximately about $50,000 over what the engineer's estimate was. So um, those prices have gone up. And it's the certified bid, bid tab does show that on track construction LLC was the low bidder. Um, we have worked with on track construction um, in the past. We did work with them on a stormwater project as well as uh, they were a subcontractor on the um, Beaver Drive overlay and trail project. So staff and the engineer would recommend approval of the project and I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. I'm I'm going to assume that the boring is going to be less costly than if we had to replace all those driveways. Correct. You you would have to, and then you the residents really don't have a place. This is a narrow drive, so you wouldn't be able to park cars along the street. You do have, you can see you have driveways to the north of there as well, so that would be cheaper than inconveniencing the residents as well as reconstruction of all of the driveways here you have five additional driveways and the utilities that you would have to cross as well okay other questions council so matt is this a stormwater utility project correct okay that's what i figured but it's one any other questions when is the schedule for this project? Uh, the project, uh, we, once we award the contract, we'll have a meeting with the, uh, not only the property owners, but the contractor as well, get their timeline, but it was really looking to kick off uh, in the spring of 23. And how long do you think it'll take? I believe the project, it'll probably take a um, month, month and a half to complete that, barring any weather setbacks or uh, material delays. Thank you. Other questions? This is a public hearing on this item. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing at 723. Do we have a motion to approve resolution number 22-317? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? City vote, please. Councilmember Cope? Yes. Martin? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Motion passed. 
Do we have a motion to approve resolution number 22-318? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Cindy Bolt, please. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Motion passed. Moving on to the consent agenda. We had one correction uh, offered by the city administrator to item U. With that change, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So, second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Cindy Bolt, please. Councilmember Cope? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Martin? Yes. Motion passed. Moving on to the non-consent agenda, item 7A. Consider third reading of ordinance number 1083, amending the Johnson revised ordinances of 2007, chapter 155 to adopt a new Johnson building code and ordinance number 1087 and ordinance amending the Johnson revised ordinances of 2007, chapter 159 to adopt a new fire code. No changes from the previous reading and no additional public comments received. Okay. Council have any questions? Do we have a motion to approve third reading and to adopt and publish? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Cindy Bolt, please. Councilmember Burkhart? Yes. Martin? Yes. Cope? Yes. Motion passed. Item 7B, consider third reading and to adopt and publish ordinance number 1089, amending the Johnson revised ordinances of 2007 by amending section 69.08 to modify parking on metal circle prairie place and to correct a minor scrivener's error Clayton. no changes since previous reading no additional public comments received you may have members of the public interested in this item in the okay. audience council any questions first for clayton Seeing none, is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve third reading and to adopt and publish ordinance number 1089? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Cindy Bolt, please. Councilmember Cope. Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Martin? Yes. Motion passed. Item 7, 7C. Consider the following items related, related to PZK's 22-42. Site plan for raising canes, chicken fingers at 8550 Birchwood Court. Discussion regarding tax increment financing request for raising canes, chicken fingers. Resolution number 22-320. Approving the site plan for raising canes, chicken fingers. Clayton. Moment to get situated here. Raising canes has submitted a site plan for development of a three, approximately 3,400 square foot restaurant building at the corner of Birchwood Court and Northwest 86th Street. That's the southeast corner there. Uh, property is the former site of Burger King and is currently a vacant building. As proposed, the development would include demolition of the existing building and all associated infrastructure, parking lot, and underground utilities. So clean slate the site and start fresh with a uh, new design. Uh, property is shown on our Thrive 2040 comprehensive plan as commercial land use and is currently zoned as part of the Birchwood Crossing planned unit development and as proposed is in compliance with both the comprehensive plan and the zoning district bulk requirements and uses. Uh, the property does include uh, some tr uh, tree removal uh, along Birchwood Court in the private drive. However, they are proposing to preserve several mature birch trees on that hard corner there as the entry feature. And as for new landscaping and open space, they are meeting that and well exceeding the minimum planting requirements for the site. Uh, the sheet I have open in front of you is the landscaping plan. Uh, property is accessed via a private drive that's shared between the various commercial uses there south of Birchwood Court, and they would continue to utilize that um, with a single access point off of there. 
Um, property does have adequate parking per zoning code and uh, staff did look at the uh, drive-through configuration, uh, really trying to ensure that it was uh, meeting our draft drive-through uh, regulations. While not a current requirement in code, we wanted to make sure we had good drive-through design so that the site flowed well. And I'm happy to say that this site would meet our, our intended uh, draft regulations for drive-through. So it is uh, meeting that recommendation there. Uh, all stormwater would be managed via underground stormwater detention on the site. Uh, currently, the site is uh, not detained. And so they, because it is a complete redevelopment, they're having to bring it up into compliance with current standards. Architecture for the building, they're required to have 75% permanent material on all facades. They are meeting that with a combination of brick, fiber cement architectural panels, and architectural steel. Um, they, at Planning Commission, there was a condition that they uh, wrap the uh, drive-through canopy with some brick to match the primary building. Since Planning Commission, they have submitted revisions that have addressed that comment. So I have removed that from the resolution, but my staff report did acknowledge that. So I wanted to point that out. With that, I, that's my quick summary of the site. Happy to go into further detail or answer questions as needed. Uh, I'd leave the TIF discussion for Adam. I invite him up and we also have representatives of the applicant uh, available in the audience this evening as well to assist with discussion on either the site plan or the TIF request. Council, have any questions? have Adam provide the TIF Adam? discussion at this time. TIF request is not an action item tonight. Uh, the quick history is this property was previously in the Beaver Creek 2 TIF uh, urban renewal area. It was removed in, I believe it was 2019 as part of hitting its 20 year sunset. Um, but the Economic Development Committee has talked about this site uh, several occasions, uh, trying to get it redeveloped. Uh, they are agreeable to an $80,000 demolition grant to the property owner to help facilitate the demolition and the exit of the Burger King lease, uh, which would facilitate the construction of this. Uh, so we've taken a look at a kind of an urban renewal strategy and looked at the finances of Beaver Creek 2. Maybe we could add this property back into that urban renewal area and be able to provide an $80,000 demolition grant upon completion of the construction of this building. Uh, to do that, we have to go through a number of procedures uh, to get there. So given that uh, Raising Canes is interested in moving forward on this, we wanted to reach, uh, get this in front of the City Council, uh, the Non-Economic Development Committee, and uh, confirm that that was a direction you were comfortable with. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, I think Raising Canes plans to proceed, and then we'd follow up with the procedural items for the urban renewal uh, amendment to add this property back in there and pay out that grant again, upon completion of demolition and construction of this facility according to its site plan. Have to answer any questions. I also have any questions for Adam? Adam, are you looking for directions tonight then on TIF, on the looking, TIF request? I'm looking to ensure there are no concerns um, from the rest of the council, which Council Member Martin, I guess I'm looking at you as the only person that's not on the Economic Development Committee. No, I don't have any concerns. That's good because if you had concerns, my kids would come to your house tomorrow. And I, <laughs> because I, I just want to, I just want to say that most of the time, these agenda items are of zero interest to my family. <laughs> but when I shared with them tonight or earlier today that this was going to be on the agenda, they were very excited. And I'm not just meaning because now this project will be in compliance with our stormwater <laughs> regulations. I, I want to one up uh, <laughs> Council Member Cope. I got a high five and a hug from both Ooh, of my kids wow, uh, when I told them this was on the agenda. So I well have done. never eaten at a Raisin Cane. So yeah. uh, it's yeah. going to have to be really good to beat our Charlotte's Kitchen, though. Oh, what? That's, that's, they're all good. I, I did the uh, Thrive 2040 comprehensive plan. I did a day out at the high school uh, with the government class. So got all of the students, every single one brought up, when are we getting a raisin canes? Really? There you go. So wow. You will make the high schoolers happy. <laughs> Here we are. 
Clayton, I do have a question um, about the the elevations. So um, I'm looking at page. Uh, I'm not sure what number it is, but it has. Yeah, it's right. The one on the screen there. It's got sort of a kind of a looks like a graphic design there for Johnston. Is that is are they? Are you talking about? Yes. This? Yeah. Are they, which is cool. That's really cool. They might need to tweak it a little bit more for. Or is that is that something they're planning for? Is it specific what they plan or? Uh, the background may change, um, but that is one of uh, their corporate logos. Is it? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But that is signage, so that would be addressed under separate permit. Okay. It's shown on this drawing for reference purposes only. I just didn't. I didn't know if it was like sort of like you know, like the come and go did their thing with the ampersand. That's very Johnston themed. And I didn't know if they were trying to replicate that. I, I would not be able to do the story of the logo service, so I will okay. refrain no, from doing no, that. Okay. But but it is a corporate logo. Okay, that sounds good. Um, Clayton is the the landscaping plan is quite extensive. Is that uh, uh, is this like a uh, typical uh, building layout and landscape plan? Do you have any? I mean, is this their standard this amount of landscaping? Um, I'd maybe look to the the applicant's representative to maybe address that since they've done other sites. Good evening, Debbie Stos with Premier Design Group, we're the civil engineer for the project. And that is pretty typical for a Raising Cane's development. Uh, they go way above and beyond with their landscaping. If you, and if you said you've never ate at one, but if you would go to other sites, they do go above and beyond in any municipality that they work in. And they're, they do a good project. I mean, it looks great. Um, I appreciate all the landscaping. I really do. And so thank you for that. I will make one comment. There's like something like 80 crimson pygmy barberries on the plan. Okay. And as a person who used to maintain landscaping, um, I would hate that. It is, <laughs> it is hard to pull trash out of those I thorny agree. things. I do agree with that. So you're uh, close to the interstate and close to a fairly busy road. You're going to have a lot of trash catching right in there. I just would. They grow fine. They're just. We'll revisit that. And you might want to consider yeah, we'll that. Re I'll talk to the landscape or architect and we'll revisit that and see what we can do there. Any other questions? Also, any, anything else? I, this might be for Clinton, but is there a sidewalk uh, that leads to the store itself from the sidewalk? There's a sidewalk. It's a little short connection uh, to Birchwood. Oh, okay, now I see it. Yes. So thank you very much. Welcome to Johnston. Thank you. Excited to be here. Sounds like we have uh, residents that can't wait for you to get here. <laughs> we hear that a lot. Um, we're excited. Like I said, we are very excited to be here. So, thank you. Thank you. Else, have any other questions? Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council on this item? If not, do we have a motion to approve resolution number twenty-two dash three twenty? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Cindy Volt, please. Councilmember Cope? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Martin? Yes. Motion passed. Item 7D, 2023 24 Strategic Plan Goals and Objectives. Is that you? Yes. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, as the Council is aware, the City's current strategic planning. Uh, plan was developed this fall and winter of 20, 2021. Uh, so it was time to update this plan. Uh, now the current plan, there was two, or the new plan, there was two strategic plan sessions held, both October 6th and October 25th of this year, uh, in order to create this new plan. Now these sessions were facilitated by Tamara Kenworthy of On Point Strategies. Now tonight the council's asked to receive and file this plan. And then in addition to the specific goals um, by specific departments, there are also three main goals that I would highlight this evening. Uh, first was to explore alternative funding sources for growth initiatives and budget sustainability. Second was to develop a five-year master staffing plan. And third 
is to maintain focus on DEI. Now, this plan does outline uh, the people that the person or people that will be responsible for the measurement ma matrix of each item and kind of moving them. Um, and additionally, then the next steps will be for staff to develop uh, specific tasks uh, needed to complete each of these in order to implement each goal. Now, in addition to tracking uh, these on um, on an ongoing basis using our new um, Inviso software, the city's online uh, strategic planning and performance management software, as staff does plan to provide quarterly progress reports to council during work sessions. So unless there's any specific questions this evening, uh, the ask tonight is simply to receive and file uh, the 2023-2024 strategic plan. We have to answer any questions council has this evening. Thank you. Else have any questions, Mike? I think they're satisfied with uh, the report as it's been prepared. But I wouldn't go that far as yet. I'm just reading it for the first time. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to accept it and we'll. Uh... Okay. So, do we have an action item here? It would be a motion to receive and file. Motion to receive and file, Mayor. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Cindy vote, please. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Motion passed. Item 7E, e, consider approval of claims in the amount of $2,446,099.36. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Cindy vote, please. Councilmember Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Martin? Yes. Motion passed. We did have city administrator and staff comments earlier. Is there anything else that we need to cover? None this evening, you ma'am. Okay. Moving on to the uh, city council comments. Councilwoman Martin. Uh, I don't have any comments. I sorry I missed the tree lighting. I hope it was. It well was attended. amazing. <laughs> it was cold, but it, you know, hundreds of people turned out. And uh, they stayed for the entire two hours and just uh, had a great time. So great, far exceeded my expectation. And and uh, you know we had many staff involved. And in fact, uh, Matt, who's the uh, what's the name of the individual in your department? Your your deputy, uh, Scott Cherry. Scott had to put the tent back to where it belonged. The wind had literally blown it several feet. Yeah, it had shifted the tent with the uh, high winds that we had the night before. So Scott was well, he, able to come in. And... He would kind of save the day for us. But we had many other staff that were involved uh, in the event as well. And so just want to thank everybody for all of their effort. Uh, it, it truly was an incredible event. Um, and everybody enjoyed it. So you, you missed a good one. All right, good. <laughs> Um, my only comments were going to be on that same uh, topic, and so thank you to all who participated. It was fun, it was cold, but it was great to be able to see and experience community. I, I also do want to go on the record, though, as saying that uh, uh, neither a Canes nor training for some sort of marathon, if it's in my future, will ever impact uh, my uh, reasoning for going to Charlotte's Kitchen uh, on a <laughs> near weekly basis. Uh, so the, the fact is that uh, I look forward to all of the dining uh, opportunities that we have in our uh, fair city and more to come. Councilman Cole. It was a wonderful event Saturday night. And um, I thought, especially whoever made the decision to move some of the some of the vendors inside that was the second best decision of the night the best decision of the night was made by the mayor when she decided to move the drawing inside so kudos to you that was a brilliant move um i i uh um uh, in our household we have lots of interesting discussions and one of the discussions that's come up over the last couple of weeks is there's been a couple of communities in uh northwest iowa where i'm from originally who have decided to move away from having uh, school resource officers as, uh, as part of their school districts and instead have 
uh, people who work in the school district who are, are armed. And there are some folks in my household who don't support that. And so th those people have been telling me how important school resource officers are. And I said, and she's encouraged me to, to be an advocate for that night. And I, I really feel like tonight, um, the event that we had to kind of kick off our, our council meeting really underscores the value that is provided um, by our school resource officers and Officer Slack being such a, a great um, you know, ambassador for our community. So um, uh, it, that was just a really, I, I think, a great symbol of the, of the strong relationship that we, that our, um, the, the police department to the school resource officers have with our school district. You know, another great example of our, that relationship was uh, the, the choir that we had singing here Saturday night, the unaccompanied minors. Um, and it was really cool. You know, they would, they, in between songs, they would come into the council chambers and kind of warm up and, and, uh, and uh, it was, it's just great when we have that strong bond. But um, uh, uh, I think tonight was just a really great example of the important role that, um, that our police officers through the school resource, resource officer program have developed with um, our, the, the school district, the children in our school districts. And so I really appreciate the strength of that program and how important it is for our community. So just wanted to, to add that tonight. The only thing that I will add this evening is uh, I just wanna thank everyone for their patience as I'm working through this hearing loss that I'm experiencing because of the uh, swimmer's ear infection that I've been dealing with now for the last three weeks. I've been to the doctor three times. They say everything looks good. So I just have to let nature take its course and eventually my hearing should return. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, I, I appreciate the patience. This little device this evening was amazing. Um, I can't carry this around with me everywhere, but um, if you just can, can, could continue to be patient with me, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it and uh, my hearing will, will come back. So appreciate it. With that, I think that we have one agenda item that we need to pick up, um, and that is a closed session. So do we have a motion to go into closed session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Cindy Bolt, please. Councilor McCope. Yes. Burkhart. Yes. Martin. Yes. Motion passed. Max, we'll just sit tight a minute. I want to come over and talk to you real quick. I kept wondering why Molly was here tonight. I just figured it out. <laughs> I hope you learned something. I mean, there's a Canes coming to Johnston, right? Yes. How exciting. Cool. I think that's uh...